Before we begin though, I'm pleased to say that this video is sponsored by Zavi, but more on that in a little bit. Much like the movie industry, the small screen has been slowly but surely getting back on track after the hardships of the pandemic. And the opening half of 2022 in particular has seen TV return to form in a big way. It's been a busy, stressful and difficult time over the last few years, but the following 10 shows, both new and renewed, are released here to keep us company. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 best TV shows of 2022 so far. Number 10, Stranger Things Season 4. If you're after some exciting summer fun, then look no further than the latest season of Netflix's mega hit Stranger Things. Released four whopping years after season three, but still proving to be a worthy successor to what came before. With more mysteries for the gang to solve, the fourth season of this beloved series hasn't finished its run as of this recording. But despite some flaws, a messy overflowing narrative that hasn't been able to effectively bring together its enormous ensemble, Stranger Things season four has has already emerged as a triumphant crowd pleaser. With just those aforementioned episodes to go, Stranger Things' fourth season might not be able to justify its $30 million an episode price tag, wowzers, but its thrilling mystery and astounding production design have already made it one of the most exciting and popular TV seasons of the year. And at the very least, these episodes have gotten a whole new generation of people into Kate Bush, which in itself is enough to secure it a spot on this list in my opinion. Yeah, good going guys. Number 9. Ozark Season 4 after the conclusion of Breaking Bad, Ozark offered audiences the chance to fill the void left by their favorite show. Complete with shady everyman and a dysfunctional family at the center of its crime-driven drama, it's easy to see why people gravitated towards this series. But Ozark is more than just a spiritual successor to Breaking Bad, as its fourth and final season proved when it brought the Bird family's hardships to the rousing conclusion it always deserved. Constantly twisting in on itself, and brutal, it's a season of almost unrivaled unpredictability and tense emotional payoffs. As with most shows on this list, the biggest strength in Ozark's arsenal is the cast. Jason Bateman, who also directed several episodes, Laura Linney and Julia Garner each give their finest performances yet, and capture the urgency and impending doom of their surroundings without fault. So yeah, if your friends have been telling you for years to watch this show, now is the time to finally listen to them. Number 8. Heartstopper Based on her own graphic novel series, Alice Oseman's life-affirming teen drama Heartstopper was so popular and critically lauded when it came out that Netflix has already renewed it for a second and third season. And yeah, it's easy to see why. Telling the story of Charlie Spring, a gay student who falls in love with his classmate Nick, the show's light-hearted humor and sensitive portrayal of young love make it both a sweet coming-of-age gem and a touching LGBTQ plus love story which avoids stereotypes for added legitimacy. Touching on everything from trans youth, identity, and the everyday struggles and joys of school, Heartstopper is a heartwarming exploration of what it means to accept yourself and others. It's simple but effective comedy edge and spotless cast only make it that much more endearing. Number 7. Gaslit Given the sheer volume of miniseries about American history in the last few years, it's understandable if Gaslit passed you by. Unlike many of the less inspired shows around it though, this isn't a series that you'll want to miss. Starring Julia Roberts, Sean Penn, and an electrifying Shea Wiggum, the drama tells the story of how the Watergate scandal tore apart not just the Nixon administration, but those behind the scenes who stood by the president's side or bravely renounced him. Gaslit works so well because it simply pulls no punches. Its thrilling, detailed, orientated storytelling makes for an uncompromising portrait of corruption, but one that, despite the infamy of Watergate and its fallout, constantly finds a way to feel fresh. Earlier, we mentioned that this video is being brought to you by Zavi, the one-stop shop for all things pop culture, where gaming, TV, movies, music, comic books, and everything else collide. Now, Zavi is home to a huge range of exclusive clothing and merchandise collections from all the biggest franchises. So, whether you're super into Star Wars or mad for Magic the Gathering, Zavi has something for everyone. Speaking of Star Wars, though, boy, does Zavi have a treat for you Star Wars fans, and that's me included. Brand new and a Available right now, they have a range of merch for the new Obi-Wan Kenobi series and a range of memorabilia for Star Wars' 45th anniversary. 
And let me tell you, this stuff is great. As a big Star Wars fan myself, before Zavi, I had to just make do with whatever tat was around the house to make my Star Wars dreams come true. Looking good. Do Chewie. No. Wait, 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 wait. Chewie doesn't have a lightsaber. No. Chewie doesn't have an axe. He's not got an axe. Oh, you know what? Forget it. Forget it. I'm going to go to Zavi. They've got the proper stuff. If Star Wars doesn't tickle your fancy though, they've got so much more as well. I am particularly excited about their Moth Collab headphones because they have interchangeable caps, meaning you can rep a different franchise every day of the week if you so choose. Zavi is also where you'll find the lowdown. Zavi's free digital monthly magazine about all things pop culture. Packed with articles and features on film, TV, and gaming, they've also got exclusive interviews about the biggest titles and deep dives on beloved classics. This month, it's all about Miss Marvel, The Boys, and Jurassic World Dominion. So head to Zavi through the link below and use the code CULTURE to get 20% off clothing and 10% off site-wide. That's the code CULTURE. That's all from us for now, though. Let's get back to that video. I wonder if this works. Oh, God! Number six, Barry season three. Bill Hader's ingenious sleeper hit Barry has finally returned to screens after a three-year absence, and its third season is its best yet, punctuating its dark and violent story with hearty laughs and poignant drama. More adrift and morally broken as ever, the season finds hitman Barry without a purpose, cut off from his friends and pursued by advancing enemies both mental and real. It's all striking stuff, managing to be at once very funny, self-aware, and surprisingly touching. As ever, Hader himself continues to transcend this role, not only giving Barry his roguish likability with a career best performance, but also writing and directing his way through the episodes with the energy of a man possessed. And with a fourth season on the way, you can only imagine where Hader and Barry will go next. Number five, we own this city. David Simon's latest HBO masterpiece, We Own This City, follows the events of the recent corruption plaguing the Baltimore Police Department, and in tone, intelligence, and message, acts as a worthy successor to The Wire. The focus of the miniseries lies on the always great John Bernthal, whose performance as a corrupt police sergeant might be his best work yet, and that's saying something, as it's at once raging, unpredictable, and uncertain. The writing of David Simon as well matches and enriches his work at every turn, painting a portrait of a lawlessness that's hard to not be unsettled by. Not only is We Own This City a sweeping tale of recent corruption and the futile war on drugs, but it's also a six-hour storytelling masterclass that serves as a reminder of just how humanistic and aware Simon is as a writer. At its best, it matches the greatest highs of The Wire without fault. Number four, Severance. High concept thrillers don't come any better than the recent Apple hit Severance, Dan Erickson's intelligent drama about a corporate stooge who starts to unravel the mysteries surrounding the sinister tech conglomerate that he works for. Anchored by the urgent and often gloomy performances of Adam Scott, John Turturro, Christopher Walken, and Britt Lower, and directed by Ben Stiller, Severance works hard to craft a tantalizing mystery with no easy answers, while acting as a brutal takedown of corporations and offers a unique sci-fi vision. Severance is original and unique in the best way, an unpredictable gripping yarn that, only one season in, has almost limitless potential going forward. You've never seen any of the actors like this before, particularly a transcendent Adam Scott, and you'll be hard pressed to find a more gripping show for the rest of 2022. Number 3. Pachinko as great as it may be, Severance isn't the new best series to debut this side of 2022, though. Nope, that honor goes to the intergenerational epic Pachinko, which follows a Korean family through decades of hardship and life-altering history. Jumping backward and forward through time to explore where the family have been and where they're going, Pachinko's narrative scope makes it at once thrilling and yet quite intimate, capturing the how, why, and when of a family and country constantly in flux. Deeply moving, and with visually arresting cinematography, the series thrives off its ambition and endearing, often tragic cast. Led by a sublime Yoon Yo Jung, and through its emotional resonance and lofty themes, has the potential to be one of the decade's most vital small screen experiences. Number 2, Undone Season 2. 
For the second season in a row, Amazon's Undone has emerged as one of the best shows on TV. Even if we've had to wait three whole years to see how Alma's time-bending exploration of self and family continues to test itself. Crafted with visually stunning rotoscoping technology that gives it a striking feeling of detachment from the real world, Undone's second season finds Alma and her deceased father Jacob traveling through time and space to uncover more mystery and family history that's long eluded them. As mind-bending as it is though, Undone's greatness really comes from its characters. Whether it's compulsive protagonist Alma and her quest for closure, or her sister Becca's attempts to find happiness despite the roadblocks in her path. A beautiful, touching, wonderful original tale that surprises on an episode-to-episode basis, much like the creator's previous show, Bojack Horseman. Undone was so close to being the best TV show of 2022 so far, and there was only one thing that had the chance of topping it. Number one, Better Call Saul season six. The first half of Better Call Saul's final season has more than lived up to the hype. And that was no easy feat, considering that the fifth season took the show to brand new highs, and this sixth has the pressure of needing to finish everything with a bang and tie satisfyingly into Breaking Bad. Across the first seven episodes that comprise part one of the final run, though, Better Call Saul willingly has hurt its characters more than ever before and thrown an increasingly embattled Jimmy McGill into his final descent into the world of Saul Goodman. Making the most of the show's slow burn Learning intensity and rewarding payoffs, season six has been Better Call Saul's most daring installment yet, actively enriching the events of Breaking Bad while still finding ways to punish Jimmy, Kim, Mike, and their foes without retreading old ground. The wheels are starting to fall off in this story, and we've already seen two characters reach the end of their narratives in jaw-dropping ways. Things are coming to a close, and boy, are they coming to a close in style. With some of the finest cinematography on TV today, even by the show's own impossibly high standards. At this point, Jimmy isn't quite ready to become the Saul we meet in Breaking Bad, but the cracks are now more visible than ever, and the danger has never been higher. Honestly, should it continue this way, there should be no doubt left at all that Better Call Saul is superior to its predecessor. Yeah bring on those final six episodes. So that's our list. I want to know you guys think down in the comments below. What did you think about the shows on this list? And are there any great ones I missed off here that I should check out before we do the roundup at the end of the year? Let us know. And while you're down there, could you also please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.